here, we've got the Wukong M flight control system, which was sent to us by Robert over at UAVproducts.com, formerly DJI USA. Let's take this over to the bench and see what's inside the box. Okay, here we have the Wukong Autopilot. Let's take a look, see what's on the inside here. And, oh, accessories. Accessories over there. Oh, stickers. I thought maybe it was a note from uh, Robert at UAVproducts.com, formerly DJI USA. Anyway, stickers. Next we have, oh, this is the brain. This is the part which does all the thinking. Essentially, it controls everything. Uh, you hook all your ESCs to it, you hook all your sensors to it. Everything hooks to this. Okay, here we have the, oh, this is the inertial measurement unit. It's kind of heavy, actually. Um, it is the accelerometer and gyroscope. And it has some kind of patented technology to help with vibration, which is nice. This is an LED indicator. It will let you know uh, if your GPS is locked down properly, what mode you're in, ready to fly or not. Very important. You can mount that somewhere convenient. It's metal, which is kind of nice. And here we have the highlight, the GPS compass module. This is what allows it to return to home, hold position. This is why you buy this, or one of the reasons you buy this. Okay, and onto this accessory box, though. Here's what we have in here. Uh, open it up. Got a few things. Let's put that aside. First thing we have here, oh, this is the little mount for the GPS module. It allows you to get the GPS away from the electronics, transmitters, and such. Uh, the higher up you can get it, the better off you are, and they have different lengths here, the little poles. Next thing we have here, this is the power unit. This is what feeds power to the system. And it comes with an XT60 connector. Okay, next we have our wires here. These are just designed to allow you to easily connect your receiver to the brain. So each one of these corresponds to one of the inputs over here, like throttle, aileron, elevator, and then go to receiver. Last, we have a standard USB a to mini, or micro B, I should say. A to micro B. You can use it to charge your cell phone, you're not using it for this. But this allows you to program the unit. Here we've assembled the Wukong outside of the craft so you can see how everything hooks together. Okay, here we have the brain, which hooks to the inertial measurement unit, which is the gyroscope and accelerometer package. Then the brain to the computer via USB. Then with two separate wires, both in the X1 and over here, to the power unit, which hooks to the LED, mounted externally, and the GPS, and of course, power. Then, we hook your receiver up with all these little wires over here. So, aileron, elevator, throttle, rudder, accessories. Good to go. Okay, so we're going to install the Wukong in a frame. We've chosen the S800 because it was also provided to us by Robert at UAVproducts.com, formerly DJI USA. Anyway, the frame can be seen in a different video. Let's go install. Is all installed. Let's put the limbs back on. Go flying. So here we are out in the field to finish the setup and testing of the Wukong M flight control system, which was sent to us by Robert at UAVproducts.com, formerly DJI USA. Anyway, let's get over to Tekkenstein to finish the setup. The wire. So we're going to work our way through the Wukong Assistant software right now. So the first screen we have here is the mounting, which you specify the offset of the IMU and the GPS both in this case, and the orientation of the IMU in case you can't actually mount it facing forward. So that makes for a really convenient setup if you have an odd shaped craft 
or want to put the GPS somewhere else. Now it's best to have it as close to center as possible, but if you can't, you just enter in the calculations here uh, as far as it's offset. Since we're on the mounting screen, there's one more thing I want to mention. Magnetic declination offset. Essentially, difference between true north and magnetic north. It's very important for it to fly home to you. Magnetic declination varies with your geographical location, and it changes over time. So every year you should go online and determine the approximate value for your area. For us here in the Pacific Northwest, it's 15.8 degrees. So we twist the GPS module by that same amount. The second page we're worried about here is the motor mixer page. That is where you establish what type of copter you're going to be flying. So the next page we're going to use is transmitter calibration. This is one of the most used pages, of course, when you set up your transmitter the first time. You center all your controls for the green, and you can check to see which direction they move in, whether you have to reverse them or not. Also, you can set your failsafe here. This is where they failsafe, GPS, and manual mode. Okay, now here's the most important page, the autopilot page. This is where you adjust the system's flight characteristics. I bound this knob here so I can adjust it real time in flight. So I've got the basic gain, roll, and pitch right now set to here. I'm going to give it some quick stick inputs left and right, forward and backward, and basically check the results and then adjust the knob. What I want to do is take the knob as high as I can go without it wobbling after I give it a quick input. So back it up just slightly, and we're pretty stable now, so I'm happy with that. Now that I've got the gain about where I want it, I'm going to take and lock out this knob, saving the settings in the computer. So next thing we're going to do is bind the knob to the attitude gain, which basically is how fast it responds to your stick inputs. So quick and snappy, or kind of slow and smooth. What I want to achieve here is to get the controls to respond quickly, but not too quickly. Uh, too slow, it'll become dangerous because you can't stop it from going a certain direction. You can't change angles quickly enough. Too high, it's a little too responsive, and a little twitch in your radio will cause it to kind of wobble about a bit. So you One thing I did like about this whole procedure is that I never had to power the craft off. Essentially, I would hook it to the computer, make my setting changes, go fly, land it, come back, hook it to the computer again, make a setting change again, go fly again. It's great, nice and fast. And for those of you using a gimbal, here's your gimbal page. And the last page we have here is the voltage page. This is where the craft monitors the voltage of the pack at all times, and should the voltage become low, you can have it just give you a LED warning, come home and land. Calibrating the Wukong requires two people. One person holds the craft parallel to the ground, while the other person switches back and forth between attitude and manual mode six to ten times. After that, the LED indicator will turn blue. The person holding the craft then turns all the way around and the LED indicator turns green. Then they rotate the craft 90 degrees so that it is perpendicular to the ground and they turn around again. If the calibration is successful, the LED will turn white for three seconds. Okay, let's briefly take a look at the flashing LED on the S800 and figure out what those codes are telling us. To begin with, let's take a look at the startup sequence. This is what you will see when you first connect a battery to the Wukong. Next, you'll see the LED blink red alternating with another color, depending on what flight mode you're in. That indicates that the GPS is acquiring satellites. Purple blinking indicates that GPS lock is established and the Wukong is operating in GPS mode. Yellow blinking means the Wukong is functioning in attitude mode. Blue blinking indicates that you're in failsafe mode. No light at all means either you're in manual mode, or you don't have a battery connected to the unit. Don't try flying like that. Finally, to test the effectiveness of GPS position hold, we hovered the aircraft out over the field. Then we set the controller aside and used a time-lapse camera to show you how well it did over the next 10 minutes. As you can see on the anemometer, we were getting winds up to 3 knots during this experiment.
Okay, so that was our look at the Wukong M flight control system, sent to us by Robert at UAVproducts.com, formerly DJI USA. Anyway, hope you enjoy watching. See you next time. All right, fly safe. <laughs>